In global health news, the deadly Ebola virus is ravishing communities in West Africa. Few who contract the illness are able to escape death. Rise News' Erin Roan has this report. This is a day Finder thought she'd never see. Two weeks ago, she was on her deathbed at this Ebola treatment centre in northeast Sierra Leone after being struck down with a deadly virus that also killed her husband. She's the first to pull through here, but her case is rare. Sierra Leone is now the eye of the deadly Ebola storm. Authorities have declared a public health emergency as the virus continues to tighten its grip across West Africa. Workers on the ground say they're struggling to keep up. To deal with this every day, to look people in the eye, you can see they are scared. To look over this fence right behind you now and see, look at the patients, and you know that their chances are very small. It's, uh, it's horrible. Security forces are being brought in to quarantine the worst affected areas. President Ernest Bai Karoma cancelled a visit to Washington to focus on the crisis. In Liberia, schools have been closed and all non-essential government workers have been placed on 30-day compulsory leave. The neighbouring Ivory Coast is on high alert, while in Nigeria, authorities are closely monitoring those who were in contact with a man who passed away from the illness last week. Once they show symptoms, we have uh, structures in place, we have the isolation uh, ward and we, all, we have all the teams, so they know what to do. So once uh, they monitor and they notice there is viremia, because that's what we are really after, through temperature uh, hike, so we have to move them to the clinic, take their blood, analyze the blood and see what they are incubating. There are concerns of the virus spreading globally with authorities in Hong Kong, the US and UK now on alert for possible cases. Erin Roan, Arise News. We continue our report on this growing epidemic with Arise News contributor and anchor Frank Uciardo. Frank. Debbie, you know, health officials around the world are on high alert because of concerns that the record-breaking Ebola outbreak in West Africa could become a global pandemic. Sierra Leone and Liberia have declared public health emergencies, and an American missionary who contracted the disease in Liberia is in serious condition. Public health officials in Liberia and Sierra Leone are pleading for help and warning other countries of what will happen if they can't get the deadly Ebola outbreak under control. This virus, if it is not taken care of, will be a global pandemic. It's the largest Ebola outbreak on record. The World Health Organization reports more than 1,300 cases spread across four nations in West Africa. 729 people have died, including one American who is working in Liberia. Two other Americans volunteering in Liberia, Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightbowl, are battling the virus. Brantley is in serious condition, but Nancy Wrightbowl's health has now reportedly taken a turn for the worse. Meanwhile, the Peace Corps is pulling all 340 of its volunteers from the region after two of them may have been exposed to the virus. Ebola is spread through direct contact with body fluids. The current outbreak has a fatality rate of about 60 percent. The CDC says the chances of the Ebola outbreak spreading beyond West Africa are very low, but today they've raised its travel health alert level to three. It's the highest level warning. And for people to avoid non-essential travel to Liberia, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone, Debbie. And Frank, that makes perfect sense. But of course, those in here in America are wondering what is the threat to Ebola coming to our shores? Well, you know, given that international travel is very common, it's, it's very easy for somebody to come here with the disease. But what you also have to realize is that if you're infected with it, you don't show symptoms for three weeks. So you could come here and you could have it. Uh, you know, so that's a that's a very important part of, of the scenario here. So are there precautions being taken then? Yeah, well, right now, a lot of the airport workers have been trained to spot the Ebola virus, but also they put in place in the 20 major U.S. airports around the United States, you have quarantine officers. And basically, once they have somebody who's suspected of having the Ebola virus, this quarantine officer will go into action and they will isolate that person. Of course, uh, the United States has a, a superior medical system, certainly, than many countries in Africa, and some would say it's the best in the world. So if it did come to the U.S., we really do have the structure in place to contain it, do we not? 
Yeah, the U.S., uh, you know, among the highly industrialized nations, they really do have a great advantage, and that's within our health care protocol system. We have people in the hospitals trained to spot the Ebola virus, but also they're trained to isolate this person right away and then do what is very important, the detective work, to trace the travel history of the person suspected of having Ebola and find out who they've been exposed to and then track those people down to try to you know, get a, a real lead on where this person has been and where the virus may have traveled. And also, so we should mention that the WHO is going to be having an international conference next week to try to get a handle on this whole outbreak. Yeah, they really do, uh, really do need to. We've got a little extra time, so let me just ask you a couple of questions. You mentioned um, the uh, health worker, uh, Nancy Wrightbull, who is not doing well at all. What are they doing trying to get their, if you will, arms around her treatment? Well, you know, over the last 24 hours, you know, earlier yesterday, her husband thought she was doing better and she was starting to respond. And basically, they decided to give her an experimental drug to try to attack the Ebola virus. It's in very limited supply. But then we got word late today that her situation has taken a turn for the worse, and she's now in very serious condition. Yeah, I'm sure her family would uh, appreciate the thoughts and prayers of everyone. Frank Uciardo, thank you so much for that report. Thank you.